Aloha guys, welcome to another episode of Fish and Dive Hawaii, where we give you all the best fishing and diving tips here in the Aloha State, and I've been gone for like a week or two. One eternity later. I was on vacation, didn't really have enough time to post, I didn't bring my laptop or anything, so no editing was done whatsoever, but I did go on a couple dives since I've been home, so I'm going to share with you guys some of my adventures and you guys are going to like this episode. So if you guys have been following my channel, you guys know I do weekly videos every Tuesday or Thursday. I try to post one. So if you guys are interested in something like that, please subscribe below. And without further ado, let's get into today's action. On my first dive back from vacation, I decided to call up one of my good friends and longtime dive partners, Kai Mana, otherwise known as Kai808. And some of you guys may already be following him on Instagram because he posts a lot of awesome diving pictures so go ahead and check him out but i called him up asked him if he wanted to go on a quick two hour morning dive because i had to work in the afternoon and he was down so we ended up in the ocean right here This is my first drop of the dive on the left side of the screen. You can see a fish that comes right up, a little bit peeking here, and it goes into the cave. So that is a munu. It is also known as a Joe Lewis. Lewis, we call it. It's a type of goat fish. One of my favorite fish to eat. And I was trying to prey on it right there. If you can see it going in and out of the cave, I'm gonna follow it inside it with my gun. And my gun is a 110, and for those of you guys who have shot longer spear guns, it's harder to move the gun around in the water. So these whole guns, 95 centimeters and lower, are better in situations like this. So I wasn't able to get that fish. On the other side of this little sand pocket, I found this little cave that I wanted to explore. I see a little honu, which is a sea turtle. I throw it a little shaka. And I see these menpachi, which are uu or soldier fish. They usually are very nocturnal, so they'll kind of hang out in caves and you'll see them. I try to line up a double shot, but only managed to shoot one. So I wave the little turtle goodbye as I bring up a little fish right here and nice little red menpachi. So because I seen three menpachis in the hole and only managed to shoot one the first time, that means there's still at least two left inside and menpachi holes are fun because even though you shoot one the other ones usually hang out and yeah they don't I don't think they're smart enough to know any better but I go back inside of the Manpachi hole and I see something that I don't like to see at all when I'm diving which is a big fat more eel as you can see I bounce back right there <laughs> you can see the replay right here in the middle you can see the big more eel head and these things can get aggressive so I don't want anything to do with that eel at all. So I go ahead and leave. You can have the Mimpachi hole. So after this, I go and grab my tagline. I always drop my tagline when I'm not using it because I don't want it to get tangled. And I see this nice blue uhu with only one band because I just shot the Mimpachi and I missed. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Several days later and I'm still upset about that shot. Anyways, I switch over to my three prong and load it up the way I showed you guys in my last tutorial video, which is up here in the top corner of this video. And I switch over to my three prong and start shooting some coles, which are amazing fried fish. One of my favorite fish to eat. I probably say that about all my fish. Anyways, one good thing about a three prong is that you can reload it and shoot it several times like I'm doing here, especially when it's this shallow. As I go down on another drop, you can see me rotate my three prong as I talked about in that video we just discussed. And I see a couple mempachis hanging outside of a cave. Like I said, they are nocturnal fish, so they stick out like a sore thumb in the daytime. I take a shot at this, hit it, but I wasn't able to land it. As you can hear that little grunting noise, mempachi are really well known to make that sound when you guys are hunting them. And so I try to follow up by shooting them on the bottom of this little cave area, but wasn't able to get a clean shot. But as we ventured a little further out, I seen a nice pile of fish inside of this little sand pocket, as kind of we did in the first one, but I found this nice mipachi hole underneath one of the little cave areas. That seems to be a thing at this spot. So I go ahead and switch over to my three prong right now, which I keep on my tagline sometimes, just cause it's more convenient than keeping it on my buoy. And so I go down and try to land one of these mipachi 
really awesome fried fish. So right now I'm trying to find a nice size one that I can take home. And I take a shot at one right here and I'm trying to land it. As you can see, it's wiggling. I'm dragging it along the rocks, which is a good technique to keep them on. The roof of the cave is preferable, but because of the angle, I was forced to do it this way. And as you can see, that did not pan out for me. So I go ahead and try to follow it up to put this fish out of its misery, but wasn't able to pull it outside of the hole at that point. So I'm going down and I might get lucky. I'm going down and taking another drop at the same spot to try and see if I can find that fish. Sometimes they'll be like dead in the hole and you can go ahead and grab it, but I didn't find it. So I go ahead and try to shoot another one. And as you can see, one more came off of my three prong. And at this point, I'm just trying to land one right here, whatever it takes. But I wasn't able to catch one at this particular Mimpachi hole. As I venture further out, I'm getting towards the end of my dive here, or at least into the point where I need to start swimming in because I need to go to work. And so I see this nice pile of fish that I'm trying to call in right here. There's one baby uhu, you know, maybe it's barely legal. I didn't want to shoot it, come in right here, but I'm trying to get its older sister or brother to come in so I can land a nice size uhu. But unfortunately today, this little pile didn't come in but I do take a couple different angles on the same pile. So the first approach I'm taking on this pile is a straight up one, kind of just sitting down, finding a little area to hide and seeing if they come in or not. As you can see that table boss right there, the fish with the yellow fin, you can eat those, they're really good to eat, but I'm not hunting for those. And so that's the one thing you can do with spear fishing is pick and choose your battles, so take your own shots. You know, it's really rewarding when you decide to get really specific on what you want and so that approach did not work so I'm trying another technique this wasn't supposed to be a techniques video but I'm showing you guys anyways so I'm just gonna hide my eyes and one thing you can do is just stare at one piece of reef or something focus on that you can dust a little bit I've talked about that in a previous video and as you can see it's kind of working you see the ooze kind of working their way in and you kind of have to time it you know if they're coming in they, they swim in sweeping motion, so they'll sweep in and sweep out, and it can be really frustrating, but if you're patient and the timing is right, and you got the proper technique down, then you can land one of these, and unfortunately, today was not my day with this particular pile of fish. At this point, I'm already swimming in, worried about being late for work, and I shoot another kole, which is gonna be awesome to fry later on this in this episode, so stay tuned for that. I take one last courtesy drop, try to shoot a bigger game fish, something that I can take home, you know, feed a few people with. And so I'm waiting patiently, see this pile on the bottom of the sand pocket. I think it's the same one that I seen the first time. And so I noticed a nice little goat fish, gave it some thought, didn't end up pulling the trigger. And I take another drop inside of the little sand pocket. And as you can see, there's some fish coming in that goldfish will come in on the left side and it was a good size goldfish but that's the beauty of spearfishing opposed to fishing you can pick and choose what you want to eat kind of you can spare fishes lives like I did today with this Moana they are fish that I usually will eat but today I really wanted a bigger game fish and you don't always shoot what you want even though you are spearfishing uh, fish won't come in and unfortunately some days you just get goose egged when it comes to what you want to target. Yeah, you. After we shot this, I'm like, let's go in. <laughs> so right now we're gonna clean all the pan fry fish that my friend gave me yesterday. And we're gonna fry a couple of these tonight. So we'll go ahead and clean this right now and I'm gonna do a nice little time lapse for you guys. Hey guys, you see all, all the flies that I've attracted. Now I'm gonna go ziplock this up shoot this off one more time and then I'm gonna go ahead and throw this away in a little bag or something so we're probably gonna fry maybe these two hole holes and then maybe like a 
cold layer too tonight, so we'll do that in the kitchen right now. So we are here in my kitchen. I got the fish that I just cleaned. I got this small little onion I got from my grandma, and she also gave me some shoyu vinegar, chili pepper sauce, the best sauce to eat with fried fish. So the onion, I'm gonna cut it up and put it with the sauce, and we'll go ahead and prepare the fish right now. Let's cut slits inside of this holy holy right here, just so that it cooks a little more even. I'm gonna do that on both sides right over here. Ow! That's what you gotta watch out for. These things have a lot of spines. All right, garlic powder, I got this from Walmart, 98 cents. Flash, flash, right here. Get a little bit of pepper right over here. The big Costco size. Let's get a little bit of salt going. And that's it. Let's go ahead and fry this up. So I don't know if you guys can see. Got this oil warming up right over here. I'm gonna drop that in. And let's go ahead and prepare the next fish. All right, so this one's a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna cut one little slit in the middle. All of them. So two on that one. Now it takes only about two to three minutes frying on each side. You only need to flip it once. Once you start flipping it more than once, then uh, the meat can break off of it. I cut up the onions right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the sauce inside and just eat it like that. Kayla's gonna eat this fish right now. Dip it in the sauce. How is it? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> How's the fish though? Is it good? <laughs> 